Hi, this is Lorraine Rogers back with you for part two of telling you everything I know about watercolour. You can find me at www.sidewalk-gallery.com.au Last time I talked about your paper, your 300 GSM paper that you get from your art supply. There is a right and a wrong side of the paper and you'll notice the watermark on the right side so before you cut your paper up uh, just take note of that and perhaps you can put a little cross in the corner on the right side uh, to remind you when you come back to it. So this is one eighth of a sheet of watercolour paper. I usually advocate as well because framing is fairly expensive if you want to purchase a frame either a photo frame or something like that uh, do your painting to suit the frame rather than do a great painting not a standard frame size and have to pay a whole lot for custom framing. When you get better, of course, custom framing is well worthwhile. So I'm going to start today with just a flat graded wash. So my colours in my palette always stay the same. So you become quite accustomed to where they are in your palette. And because you're going to be painting a little bit every day, you'll just automatically know where to go on your palette to find the colour that you want to use. So cobalt blue, I use a lot. Uh, next to that I have permanent rose. Then I've got ultramarine blue. Raw sienna, colour I use a lot. Thalo blue and burnt sienna. They're the two colours I mix my greens with. I get a really strong dark green with those colours. And then Indian yellow here, by adding Indian yellow to these two, Thalo Blue and Burnt Sienna, I get a really uh, gum tree green, I call it. And the colour over here, Aurelian, I seldom use, but it's there in my palette today. So a graded wash, you need to have your board sloped. And the bigger the slope on your board, the better. Um, when I'm painting plein air or I'm demonstrating, I actually paint on an easel that's almost vertical. But when I'm at my studio desk, I just have a tissue box, a big tissue box under my board and that's a pretty good slope. It helps with shoulder pain as well if you're like me and you're painting a lot. Uh, having your board sloped helps with that. So quite often with a graded wash, I'll stand up. Uh, because if you're standing, you're working from your shoulder and not just from your wrist. I think a lot of problems come from just working from your wrist instead of working from your shoulders. So I'm going to take some of my cobalt blue. Now these colours can stay in your palette and dry out a little bit and just by adding water they'll come back to quite usable. So they're a very versatile sort of paint. Watercolour can be used in all sorts of different ways and it's very easy to pack it up and take it with you if you want to paint outdoors or you're going on holidays and you want to do a little bit of painting you can just put it all in a very small box and off you go. So this is a graded wash. So you start from the top of your page and what you're looking for is this bead of water at the bottom of your wash. I'm adding a little bit of water as I come down, I'm overlapping my brush strokes and I'm also keeping my brush strokes very, very gentle on the paper. If you scrub at your paper, you will break down the surface tension of the paper and your washers will go quite opaque. And see how wet that is? It's got a real shine on it. It's not scratchy. I'm not leaving any white of the paper. I'm keeping that bead of water along the bottom. And by doing that, your wash should come out quite smooth. No streaks, no lines. And although this looks quite easy, it's not as easy as it looks. And if you can pull this off, you're a lot of the way there to beginning to paint watercolour. Never go back. You know, if you've noticed you've left a little bit of white of the paper there, don't go back and try and fix it or you'll make what's called a, water, uh, a cauliflower. And 
cauliflower is caused by having your brush wetter than the paint on the paper. So there you have it. That's called a graded wash. Just a clean, unstreaky wash. Now from there, you can do all sorts of other things, but that's a good start.